All right. Let's talk about 2026, because right now, the pressure to get real, measurable value from AI is, well, it's immense. But what if this secret isn't about buying more tech? What if it's about fundamentally changing how we think about our people and our processes? Let's dive into a new way forward that could totally transform your team's success. So let's just get right to it. This is the question that's probably keeping you up at night. You've made the big investments, you've got talented people on board, but those game-changing AI results you were promised, they're just not showing up. So what is really going on here? And here it is. This is the simple, powerful truth. Nine times out of 10, when a big AI project stumbles, it has nothing to do with the code or the algorithms. It's the human side of the equation. It's how we manage, or more often, how we fail to manage the change that new technology brings with it. Okay, so let's put a name to this feeling, this thing that so many leaders are grappling with as we head into 2026. We call it AI frustration. And believe me, it is a very real and very common problem. Does any of this look familiar? You've got this wild tool sprawl with new apps and platforms popping up everywhere with no real strategy. You're suffering from a bad case of pilotitis. You know where those cool pilot projects show promise but then just die before they ever get rolled out? And it all leads to this mess of unclear roles, constant battles with the IT department, and this crushing pressure to show a return on investment when you have almost nothing to measure. It's exhausting, and it's just not sustainable. But here's the key. All of that frustration, it's just a symptom. To really fix the problem, we have to stop looking at the shiny new tools and start looking at the root cause. And that cause is always found at the intersection of people and structure. You know, for decades, we've managed change the wrong way. That's what you see on the left. We make decisions in a closed room and then drop them on the team, like through a hole in the floor. It's not just lazy, it's unethical. It breeds resistance because it lacks basic respect. The new way, the right way, is ethical change. This is where you co-create the future with the people who are going to live in it. It's all about dialogue, participation, and building trust. That's how you get real engagement, not just reluctant compliance. Now, to make that kind of ethical change happen, you need a blueprint. And that blueprint is what we call a service architecture. Honestly, you can think of it as the human operating system for your department. It's a crystal clear shared map of who does what, how work actually flows, and where every single handoff occurs. Once you have that solid human structure in place, new tech like AI becomes pluggable. You can just snap it in where it fits without blowing up the whole system. And this brings us to what is really the golden rule for 2026 and beyond. It is simple and it is non-negotiable. You cannot get meaningful, lasting results from AI if you haven't first built the human-centric service architecture for it to plug into. You have to build the structure before you introduce the tool, period. Okay, so we've diagnosed the problem. It's a lack of a clear, human-focused structure. So what's the solution? Is it another piece of software? No way. The solution is a person, a new kind of role, equipped with a very specific, very powerful method. Let's break that down. The solution is this dual role, the Change and Service Architect, or CSA. Think of this person as having two hats, and they have to wear them both at the same time. The Change Architect hat is all about the people. It's about building trust, getting buy-in, and making sure everyone feels heard. The Service Architect hat is all about the structure. It's about mapping out those workflows and roles so that AI has a stable system to connect with. One side can't work without the other. This role is the critical bridge between your people and your technology. And what powers this role? It's this agile, four-step process called the do-it method. And here's the magic of it. It's not a top-down plan. It's a cycle of dialogue. It starts with discover. Why are we even doing this? Then observe. Let's be honest. What feelings does this change bring up? Then the fun part, ideate. How can we together make this better? And finally transform. Who will take ownership of what? See the difference? It's a method built on powerful questions, not barked orders. It pulls people in instead of pushing change on them. The end result of using this method is something we call AI workplace democracy. And listen, I know that might sound a little fluffy, but it's not. This isn't some vague, idealistic vision. It is a hard, mechanical condition for success. It creates a system where real participation isn't just a nice to have, it's a requirement. It literally re-engineers the process so that people move from just taking orders to sharing real ownership. So what happens when you combine that ethical method with that kind of deep participation? Well, you create something much more powerful than a project plan. You ignite a self-reinforcing cycle. 
an engine that can power transformation again and again. We call it the trust loop, and it works like this. It all starts with trust, which you build by using the do it method and actually respecting your people. That trust unlocks genuine participation. People want to help design the new structure. That participation creates a rock-solid structure, a service architecture that everyone believes in because they helped build it. That clear structure allows AI to finally deliver measurable impact. And seeing that success, seeing that it all actually worked, well, that deepens the initial trust and the whole incredible cycle starts again, only stronger. It makes trust a controllable, strategic asset. This all sounds great in theory, right? But the question is always, how do we make this real in my organization? And that brings us to the final practical piece of the puzzle, how you can build this capability in your team for 2026 through a dedicated certification. So for you as the leader, the payoff is huge and it's immediate. First, you get a clear mandate. When you walk into a meeting with IT or the CFO, you're not just asking for resources anymore. You're presenting a data-backed architectural plan you'll see escalations and drama just disappear because roles are finally clear. And maybe most importantly, you get to evolve. You stop being a reactive firefighter and you become the strategic architect of your department's future. And this isn't just about you. Your team gets a massive win here too. They walk away with an internationally recognized qualification, but on a daily basis, they get something even better. Stability, clarity, a real voice in how their work is designed. That means way less conflict and a huge boost in feeling effective and valued. Now, the heart of this entire certification is something called the Capstone Project. And let's be clear, this is not a school project. This isn't a simulation. This is your team doing the real, hands-on work of building their actual service architecture for a real workflow. The final output is a tangible, CFO-ready proof of work. It's a document that not only proves their new skills, but gives you concrete, defensible answers to all those tough questions about ROI and governance. So, let's wrap it all up. The secret to winning with AI in 2026 isn't about outspending your competition on technology. It's about outthinking them on people and structure. It's about building the human architecture first. So the real question you have to ask yourself isn't if you're going to change, but how you're going to lead it. Are you ready to stop being just a problem solver and start becoming an architect?